Hello, I thought I should give you some more um, tran translation um, advice, how to translate statements from English into propositional logic. So I will work through a couple of the homework uh, uh, answers from 7a, although you can find all of the answers under the uh, homework assignment, I think it's week 5. Uh, you can find the answers for 7a there. But I will give you some tips as I go and, and translate them uh, with you. Here are my tips for translation. First, you identify English connectives and replace those connectives with logical operators. Second, you identify statements and replace statements with statement letters. Third, you insert parentheses, brackets, and braces based on the structure of the statement. Let's apply these tips for translation to first uh, Baronet 7a number 4. So it says, if my stock portfolio is weak, then I am losing money. Bear with me as I do this because uh, it's going to take a little bit of time. But first, you identify the English connectives. We see that there if then is an English connective here. And... Um, we replace the connective with the logical operator. So I'm going to replace if then with the logical logical operator horseshoe. So so what we have now is my stock portfolio is weak horseshoe. I am losing money. Now uh, we are going to identify the statements and replace statements with statement letters. Here's a statement: My stock portfolio is weak. Here's another statement, I am losing money. We're going to replace these with statement letters. My stock portfolio is weak. I say down here, let S equal my stock portfolio is weak. So we'll replace my stock portfolio is weak with S. And I am losing money. I say down here, let L represent I am losing money. So I'll replace that statement with L. And we are done with that translation. So the translation is S horseshoe L, as you see here. Three we didn't have to do because we don't need to put in parentheses anywhere in order to eliminate ambiguity. There is no ambiguity in this statement. It's clear that the structure is S horseshoe L. How about... Baronet 7A number 8. So it says, you pass the exam only if you got at least a C. You pass the exam only if you got at least a C. Let's look at the tips for translation. So first we're going to identify the English connectives. Only if is the English connective. And we want to replace that connective with the logical operator. So I replaced, I replaced only if with the logical operator horseshoe. Now, there's a difference between translating if then and translating only if. While both use the horseshoe, it matters which order you put the antecedent, uh, which um, order you put the antecedent and the consequent in uh, in the horseshoe statement. So the antecedent uh, for, let's take this one up here. If my stock portfolio is weak, then I am losing money. When we translated that, we put um, the translation as S horseshoe L with my stock portfolio is weak appearing as the antecedent. Remember, the antecedent is the thing that follows directly from, I'm uh, sorry, that, that follows directly after the if. And we put L as the consequent. The consequent is the thing that directly follows the then. So we translate it S horseshoe L. Antecedent comes before the horseshoe, consequent comes after the horseshoe. Now let's look at this one. You pass the exam horseshoe, you got at least a C. The original statement was, you pass the exam 
only if you got at least a C. You pass the exam only if you got at least a C. Now, typically, the antecedent is the thing that follows directly after the if. So you might think in this statement, you got at least a C is the antecedent. But that's not true. The antecedent follows the if in if-then statements. In only if statements, the antecedent follows the Sorry, the consequent follows the if. So we'll take the statement, you got at least a C, as the consequent. And we'll take the statement, you pass the exam, as the antecedent. All right, so what we've done is we've, step two, we've identified the statements. Now we need to replace the statements with statement letters. Okay, since you pass the exam is the antecedent, it just goes before the horseshoe. You got at least a C is the consequent that goes after the horseshoe. All right, so we said let you pass the exam, uh, let P equal you pass the exam, so we'll put P there. And we said let you got at least a C is G, so we'll put G there. So that's the translation. Okay, so the difference between if, then, and only if is this. In an if-then statement, the statement that appears immediately after the if is the antecedent, and it goes before the horseshoe. The statement that appears immediately after the then is the consequent, and it goes after the horseshoe. In an only if statement, the statement that fo immediately follows the if is the consequent and the statement that comes before the only if is the antecedent. Okay, let's do this one. You failed the exam only if you did not get at least a C. So we know our English connective is only if we're going to replace that with the horseshoe. You failed the exam, you did not get at least a C. But we need to find all the connectives not is another connective. So we, I'll highlight that, uh, I'll bold that, and once we identify the connective, we need to replace it with the logical operator, which is the tilde. Okay. So we've done step one, let's go back up. Identify English connectives, replace connectives with the logical operators. Now we need to do step two. Identify the statements and replace statements with statement letters. You failed the exam. That's a statement. You did get at least a C. That's another statement. We'll move. You did get at least a C is the other statement. We'll move this out here. All right. We, I said here that let, I should let F equal you failed the exam and you got at least a C, let G equal that. And so we have F horseshoe tilde G. That's a translation of you failed the exam only if you did not get at least a C. All right, let's move down to the last one. Toothpaste is good for your teeth, but tobacco is not. First, let's identify the connective, but, and the connective, not. Those are the only two connectives in this statement. Now I'm going to replace the connectives with operators. So I have the dot here. I'm going to replace but with dot because the way that you translate but into our symbolic language is using the dot. And then the way that you translate the not is using the tilde. Okay. So we've identified the 
English connectives and we replace them with logical operators. So now let's identify the statements. Toothpaste is good for your teeth. That's one statement. Tobacco is good for your teeth. That's another statement. Now we need to replace the statements with statement letters. So I said let B equal tobacco is good for your teeth, so we're going to do that. And then I said let T equal toothpaste is good for your teeth, so we're going to do that. So this is not a well-formed formula. We need to move this tilde here because it's saying toothpaste, tobacco is not good for your teeth. So the original statement was toothpaste is good for your teeth, but tobacco is not. And we uh, translated that as T dot tilde B. All right, so you have your tips for translation here. I've given you some practice. I think a real key is identify the difference between if, then, and only if. All right, good luck with the test.